On November 20th, 1998, a huge step in the history of space exploration took place when the Zarya segment of the International Space Station, or ISS, was launched. It was the first part of the largest man-made object to orbit the Earth. Still in use, the ISS can actually be seen by the naked eye from Earth. Zarya, which means sunrise in Russian, was designed by the Russians for use with their Mir space station. Called a functional cargo block, this segment of the ISS was originally used to provide electricity, storage, propulsion, and guidance during the early stages of construction of the ISS. Now it is used mostly for storage. Designed for only six to eight months of orbit on its own, Zarya was forced by delays in the ISS project to fly autonomously for two years until the next segments of the space station were launched. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. Everything is still looking good for launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T-minus 50 seconds. And we are transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Endeavour is now running off of three onboard fuel cells. Coming up for auto sequence start. So we have a go for auto sequence start. Endeavour's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. C minus 20 seconds and counting. C minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour with the first American element of the International Space Station uniting our efforts in space to achieve our common goals. 
Zarya was paid for and owned by the United States as part of the American contribution to the ISS, but it was built in Russia and launched from Kazakhstan. Weighing in at 21 tons, Zarya is 41 feet long and 13.5 feet wide. Zarya was chosen over the U.S.-built Lockheed Bus 1 because of price, $220 million compared to $450 million. Hello, I'm Sunny Williams. I'm up here on the International Space Station. <laughs> We're going into the Russian segment. Be ready. You don't need a passport either. It goes a lot farther back than this. Uh, we'll go take a trip and say hello to the boys down there in just a minute. Well, let's do that first, actually, and then we'll go down to the Soyuz at the very end. This is Yevgeny. Hi. <laughs> Doing a little tour. <laughs> this is the FGB, and what's cool about this module, it is actually the very first piece of the space station that came up in 1998. The space station has been around for about now um, manned for 12 years, but it's been up in space for about 14 years. And this was the very first. It is like the Russians' PMM. It has a lot of storage, as you can see. The ISS is the longest-running manned space station ever, continuously manned since November 2, 2000, over 15 years. The previous record was held by the Soviet space station Mir at almost 10 years. The massive dimensions of the ISS are a length of 239 feet, a width of 356 feet, and a height of 66 feet. 
The ISS weighs just under a million pounds and is expected to be in service until at least 2024. Russian and American talks of a replacement program are taking place out of the public eye at this time. The ISS provides a platform for conducting a wide range of space-related experiments and research, as well as monitoring weather patterns on the Earth and observing outer space. The ISS, or follow-on space stations, may even serve as a way station for further forays into deep space, perhaps as a staging base for trips to the Moon or Mars. The ISS also provides a means to integrate persons from other countries into the realm of space travel as a form of cultural outreach, as well as inviting students from around the world to submit experiments that may be performed on the station. By 2015, the ISS consisted of 14 pressurized modules with the ability to discard and replace modules as needed. Several new modules have been planned with modules scheduled for 2016 and 2017, delays having prevented earlier integration of the new modules. Several other modules that were planned have been canceled for a variety of reasons, such as the retirement of the U.S. Space Shuttle program. Many other unpressurized modules containing various machinery and equipment also are attached to the ISS, both for sustaining the station and performing experiments. An orbit of the Earth takes only 92 minutes, and the ISS has done this almost 100,000 times. The complexity of life support and energy production on the ISS precludes discussion here, but besides numerous written sources for background information, Interested people can consult NASA's live webcam from the ISS or read NASA's daily ISS reports. These are just a few of the many resources available to keep track of the ISS. As a question for my students, has it been worth the approximately $100 billion to keep six people in space for the last 20 years? Please give us your thoughts on the relative value of the space program and what the goals of such a program should or should not be. As some of you, I think as you guys have been told, we're hosting astronomy night at the White House with students from all over the country. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it through our telescope. I don't think it's that powerful. But, uh, but you, I can't tell you how inspired uh, these kids are uh, when they think about what you're doing. And, uh, you know, my suspicion is, is that uh, your Instagram, uh, Instagram feed alone has probably set a bunch of young people on a new course. Um, and they're, they're going to be some of the kids who are coming here tonight who've never known a time where we didn't have uh, an astronaut or two living on board uh, the space station. Uh, with uh, 15 years of continuing, continuous human presence up there. So congratulations to you and, and to Chell and, and everybody at NASA. I, I hope more young people get to see some of the incredible things that you're doing. And uh, as you know, I've tasked NASA to uh, put us on a journey to Mars, and uh, you're part of that process of helping us reach this goal. So uh, really, really proud of uh, everything, everything that's going on. Well, thank you, sir. It's, uh, you know, it's a real privilege to be part of such a great program. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of great science up here, over 400 experiments while I'm here for this year. And, uh, you know, a lot of those are to getting us uh, on this journey to Mars. And, uh, you know, it'll be great to see it uh, be a success. And hopefully some of those kids there that will be there tonight will be, uh, be part of that in some capacity or another. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines. Your viewership is much appreciated.